So a little bit ago, I made a video on these guys, Easy Computers. If you haven't seen the video, I'll briefly summarize it. Easy Computers is a pre-built computer manufacturer, and I gave my opinion on them in the original video, and I actually recommended you don't buy from them, because a lot of their computers had serious problems. How long the computers would last wasn't very clear. If anything, it didn't seem like it had long at all. Iffy part compatibility and airflow, and that's basically the long and short of it. But they are back with a vengeance. They've added some new computers to their store, and now are allegedly breaking the law. We'll get on to that in a bit. But first, let's talk about the new PCs they've added. There's only one new computer in the entry level section the Xeon E3 1280 plus the 1650. Now, last time I ran some calculations using the bottleneck calculator and I did run some more, but while I was researching, I did find the people arguing against the validity uh, of bottleneck calculators because it does depend based off the game. So, although it does hurt my point in the original video, it is necessary to point out for clarity's sake. The choice of CPU uh, kind of confused me at first. My well versed in PC knowledge viewers will recognize that the Xeon is a line of server CPUs made for like websites or a Minecraft server off of it, you would use a Xeon. But uh, this particular CPU is 13 years old, which means it will not receive any new security updates and hasn't for a little bit. So if you use a CPU like this, you are susceptible to um, security attacks. So maybe it's actually not a good idea to run a server off this computer uh, just because the CPU is so old. I still don't love the choice of GPU, uh, not necessarily compatibility, but just price to performance. The 1650 isn't great. For almost the same price, I got my my GTX 1080 Ti, I got mine for around $180. GTX 1080 Ti absolutely blows the 1650 out of the water, but I'll still give it points because the performance in game is actually pretty solid for the price you're paying. You still could pay a little bit more and get a lot extra in terms of performance, but the choice isn't horrific. But I will be taking uh, a point off just for a little, uh, a bit of a petty thing really. The video he links to show the performance of the parts aren't the same parts as listed in the listing. And he does state this, he does say they're not the same. And while they are similar, it took me less than a minute to find this video right here, which is literally the exact parts, the Xeon and the 1650, and showing how it performs in games. It really wasn't that hard. And if you can't find a video, I understand because these are really specific parts combined together, then make your own, make a test bench. It shouldn't be that difficult, especially since I found it in less than a minute. Anyway, the PC also includes 16 gigabytes of DVR4 RAM, which is good, a 512 gigabyte SSD, which is also good, a Wi-Fi 5 capable Wi-Fi card, which is great to have. It's a great inclusion, and I am sick of those little Wi-Fi dongles that they give instead of a Wi-Fi card. Include Wi-Fi cards in your build. I don't want to use that. It, it maxes out at like 10, 10 meg megabits a second. Come on. Windows 10 is also nice, but I mean, despite how you feel about Windows 11, Windows 10 is coming to its end of life, which means no more security updates, like I pointed out before. So not having Windows 11 on a machine could actually be dangerous going forward. What is that? Windows 10 unactivated? All right, that's a really weird thing to point out, but I'll come to that later. Anyway, like last time, it also uses an OEM case, motherboard, and power supply. Now that's where my issues started with the original builds. Those just aren't great. The airflow in these cases has to be suffocating just because of how much is packed into such a small case. And there isn't any extra fans to take all that hot air out. It's just how many fans came with the original case. Power supply in these cases are trash because they're the original power supplies that came with the Dell computer. They're meant for office, like docs, Excel, spreadsheets. They're not meant for gaming PCs. And the motherboard can, but not always, impact your path of upgrading. I wouldn't actually know how much you can and can't upgrade on these computers because uh, I don't I'm not a channel with 10k subscribers I didn't put all that money towards buying a computer to uh, test it so I guess take what I say with a grain of salt the OEM chassis power supply and motherboard were all to cut costs and while it does it rather effectively I still think that really hurts the computer in the long run mostly just limits the ability for the build to evolve with rapidly changing climate of uh, PC so that's just my two cents on it if you do enjoy playing major esports titles and older heavier games then you're actually going to be pretty well off with this to reiterate it though if you do end up buying this computer watch out for temps and probably install some of your own fans and also don't plan on upgrading anytime soon it's time for the mid-range option and that's actually jumped up in price a little bit the original is 600 and the new edition is 750. i wonder where all that money went and after looking at it i'm still wondering to its credit, it still does perform well in benchmarking. I'll show some benchmarks now. However, the CPU once again stopped receiving updates. In 2022, like I said before, you pick this computer, you're at risk for a security problem. But I'm actually struggling to find where that $150 went. The performance is practically the same over both systems, and I did actually compare both systems. The FPS jump is minimal, to say the very least. But where I guess it went to is the fact that the case, motherboard, and power supply are from an HP computer rather than a Dell computer, so that could be where it went. It certainly didn't go to the performance 
performance, but at the very least, the PSU is commendable this time around. It's a strong 700 watts with 90% efficiency. Comparing it to the $600 computer in the same mid-tier option, the power supply in that one was 260. That is dangerously low. I pointed out last time, but that that low of power with that high of parts and like specs can cause major problems for your power supply. It could throttle and then explode, genuinely. And because the $600 build uses Dell everything, that model, that power supply is proprietary, meaning you cannot change it out. So if you get a bad power supply, the computer's toast, basically. Once again, Windows 10 unactivated, which is getting weirder and weirder. Overall, the mid-range is a bit confusing. The power supply on the 750 is a lot better, but the graphic performance didn't move at all. So it feels like the $150, while making it safer for the computer, is kind of wasted in terms of performance. And I just realized something. In my old video, in the listing, it touted having M.2 SSDs. The mid-range also had a second SSD, which was a 240 gigabyte SATA SSD. And yes, M.2s and SATAs are two different forms of storage. Both SSDs, but an M.2 is significantly faster. But in the picture of the inside of the build, it still shows an M.2. Well, that would be fine. And you might think, oh, well, what if we took it up to save money? Well, then it should reflect that in the price, but the price has not changed since last time. I don't know, it just kind of rubs me the wrong way that he decided to take out the M.2s in those systems, but still included a picture of the M.2s. Anyway, moving on to the high-end system. And there's only one, and I know for a fact that there used to be another one that wasn't this price, because in my last video, I talked about it. It used to be $800 and now there is only one for $1,300. This better be worth it. The CPU and GPU are fine. They're what you would expect around that price range, except I didn't actually recognize the GPU at first. It's the 4070, but it's so small in the case that I actually thought he was lying. But that's just the 4070 mini. But I feel like you should say that on your listing just in case someone wants to sell these parts later down the road so that they know what parts they have. Because no one's going to guess that's the 4070 unless they're either well versed in PC knowledge or someone tells them. And no one who's well Inversed in with PC knowledge is buying these computers. I guess that is kind of the point though. 32 gigabytes of RAM is fine, but for this price range, you really could have pushed it to 64 gig. And only one terabyte of storage, it is M.2, and I'm not saying you have to include two M.2, but at least another 500 gigabyte SSD would be more than enough, especially since you're paying $1,300 for this thing. Back at it again with the Dell cases, just even though uh, the HP system had a way better power supply. Uh, this one goes back to Dell. Dell case, Dell motherboard, and Dell's power supply. I wonder if these PCs can be legally classified as a bomb. Now, the PSU is 500 watts, which is not bad. It's not nearly as egregious as the mid-level 260 watt version. But if you will do two seconds of research, you'll find out that the 4070 mini uh, requires at least 650 watts of uh, power. That's not even including the CPU, by the way. And this becomes a bust in a ticking time bomb. It's not that hard. You can spend another a hundred dollars and get that power supply to where it needs to be You can find a 700 watt unit for that much on like sale or something stop using these cases the motherboard and the power supply They're just not good for these components. It's a disaster waiting to happen. I think this was dying the whole time I have two. I think one of them was dying and now the elephant in the room. The whole reason I even made this video to begin with. If they had just released new PCs, I really wouldn't have cared. But looking at them, I realized something that wasn't there last time. Something that confused me at first. Under the parts list, it's listed Windows 10 Unlicensed. And that confused me because it just wasn't there before in my previous video. Can you even sell unlicensed Windows copies? Because it seems kind of shady on how he's not paying for the keys. How do these computers even get Windows in the first place if you don't pay for keys? Is what he doing even legal? And I found my answer. And I do want to be careful because I don't want to get sued for defamation. But technically, allegedly, allegedly, yes. Yes in some parts of the US. I was curious, so I looked it up and on the official Microsoft forms by an official employee, technically to use Windows, a license must be required as per EULA says. And then someone else chimes in, unaware of their affiliation with Windows, they could just be some random guy. Technically, it would be illegal, yes. Whether the legality is enforced where you live is another issue. However, if you're a business selling computers, you should be able to obtain a volume license and sell the machines priced accordingly. But that's the kicker, technically. It just depends whether or not it's enforced where you live. And under the exact EULA contract that people sign up for, when they purchase and or sell windows you have to own a license before you use windows and depending on where you live you could face legal ramifications this is not me accusing them i am not accusing them of committing a crime 
please do not sue me. This is just me making an observation based on what's on the listing and based on the TOS of Microsoft. The keyword is allegedly. Anyway, I just wanted to come in here and give you guys an update on easy computers. I still don't recommend them. A lot of their computers suffer from similar issues as before, namely the power supply and airflow issues can cause serious problems. But yeah, still don't buy from easy. New video coming out soon. The script is almost done. Yay. I should have been April Fool's video actually before this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the new video hopefully soon. All right, bye.